Hey guys, Robbie here, and today I'm gonna smash a bottle over Logan's head. Let's roll it! You got any sixes? So the short you just watched was actually choreographed and recorded in just one day. To pull this off, we hired professional stunt coordinator John Can of Action Pack Stunts to help us pull off this really cool, effective fight scene. I've been doing this stuff for about 35 years. I started when I was 19 years old in Los Angeles at uh, Kahana Stunt School. And after that, I came here to work on Walker, Texas Ranger and did about 50 episodes of that TV show. After uh, working on a lot of feature films in Los Angeles, I was in uh, Predator 2 and Mark for Death and Tango and Cash. And uh, I've been blown up by Chucky and killed by a predator and beat up by Chuck Norris. And uh, now I'm here, so. This man has been punched in the face by Chuck Norris. So his credentials speak for himself. He led us through a few tricks of the trade that made our short look like a real fight, which we're gonna share with you today. The first thing he taught us right when we got on set was one of the cornerstones of stunt work, and that's selling a punch. To make a punch seem believable, there's a few steps that you need to take that John's gonna show us. First thing we have to know is that we've gotta be on target and out of distance, okay? Meaning that if I'm gonna throw a, a punch at your head, I have to be on target across your head and I have to be out of distance so I don't hit you. Arms straight out, touch knuckles. There you go, that's about the distance you want to be, okay? You're going to imagine that there's a semicircle, okay, going around your partner, all right? All the way around to either side. So you're going to stay on the, uh, on the edge of that semicircle all the way around so that if you put your arm straight out to your side, we're still at the same distance. Bring that arm across, right across his eyes. Across his eyes and across, boom, like this. You want your arm straight out like that. Okay, it feels ridiculous. You're gonna go here, bring it across, boom, all right? You're putting the arm on the shelf, reaching out, and then across, boom, boom. There you go, just like that, and bang, there you go, good. There's no reason to get hit. If somebody's hitting you, they're not, they're not doing this right, okay? Yeah. The only time you get hit is when you're getting body punched, mm -hmm. all right, because you have to have something to react to, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna punch with a, with a, a loose fist, and you're gonna slap it in, and just kinda, just kinda slap your hand on their, on their, on their belly. Okay, but you're gonna bring it in and go boom. Okay, give them a good, give them a good tap so they can feel it. This is better than my morning coffee and waking up, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a good one. Just hire you. So, just like, hey, good morning. Yeah, come on, man. And the cell again. You're you're maintaining eye contact, so the cell is with the knees. Okay, okay. it's not. You're not bending over like this or jumping up in the air. When when somebody hits you in the gut, your legs go out from under you. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's just this. Just drop down. Just just bend your knees. All you gotta do is bend your knees and keep, yeah, like that. So, yeah, and kind of shake your head a little bit, but make sure you're making eye contact. You're looking at each other. Always maintain eye contact when you're doing a fight scene on camera, all right? If you're maintaining eye contact while you're on camera and doing a fight scene, you will hear your partner's brain shut off when he forgets the routine. You'll hear an audible click, okay? And you'll know that he forgot the routine. If you're not looking at him, you won't hear the click and you'll get hit. What I need you guys to do, and your editor will love you for this, is vocalize. All right, give us a little, uh, okay. <laughs> so the key things to remember about punches is to be on target, but out of distance so you don't hit someone, as well as keeping your arm extended so you can reveal the punch to the camera. 
To translate those punches into something believable, you have to work with your camera in different angles to make sure that it picks it up well and it makes it look realistic. We're creating illusions using camera angles, okay? Um, one of the things that you're going to want to remember is that there's a plane coming out of the middle of that camera, okay? Whenever you're throwing a punch at somebody, you have to break that plane, all right? If I throw the punch here, I didn't break the plane, okay? The plane's coming this way, so if I throw the punch this way, I didn't break it, that's a miss. If I'm throwing the punch and I want to break the plane, I've got to come across this way, bang, okay? So that was a hit, boom. So you want to make sure that you're cognizant of where the camera is all the time, especially these days, they'll have a camera on a stick, you know, going all around you, moving everywhere. You got to know where it is and you have to adjust, okay? So if he moves the camera over here and I go, boom, and that's a hit, and then I have to come over this way, and he's still over there, then I've got to go bang all the way across, okay? Or I've got to come this way, boom, across, and break that plane. See where the camera is, are you breaking the plane on his face? If that, if that lens is coming out, there's a piece of glass, yeah, there you go, that's breaking oh, so the plane. he's got to come across. He's got to, you got to come across that right, plane. Boom, that's a hit, okay? For you to find the camera, you need to step out and find the camera. You see the camera? Yeah. All right, and then you can come across, boom, and do the punch. Hey, if the camera can't see it, you're, you're wasting everybody's time. Okay. And it's gonna go from here to here. You want the camera to see that big range of motion, all right, and his head's in the middle. So always keep an eye on where your camera is so you can cross the plane with your punches. When you don't cross that plane, it will look like you haven't made contact. Even when you go with low angles, play your punch to the camera so that it translates well to the screen. One thing to remember is that the person that is at most risk of harm during a stunt should be the one that's in control. This even counts for choking stunts. The person getting choked should be pushing towards themselves and the person choking them should be pulling away. That way the person at risk of getting choked is controlling how much pressure is applied to their neck. It may feel odd doing it, but since both actors are still using some form of force, their muscles will flex and the camera will pick up what looks like to be a realistic choking scene. I am the king of Shutterstock! Now fights aren't all just punches, so John taught us how to properly throw someone without getting hurt. He brought out some mats so we can practice the stunts safely. Throws should be controlled by the person being thrown. The person who is doing the throwing should only be guiding them. Now the mats are only there for rehearsal. Once you start recording, you are really going to be hitting the ground. So that's why we protected ourselves with padding and specialty armor to prevent us from getting hurt. Since I was only going to be getting hit on the back of the chair, I wore a spine protector to disperse the blow. And be like a sexy hey, tortoise. Logan was outfitted with a protective motorcycle jacket to cover his shoulders, torso, and back. It also made him look like a cartoon cowboy. To make this fight more interesting, we added some props to sell the realism, which included breakaway chairs and pool cues, as well as sugar glass. These breakaway chairs and pool cues were specifically made for the shoot by John. The breakaway chairs had all the metal screws removed from its joints and replaced with toothpicks and wood glue to just barely keep it in one piece. But when it makes contact, it really breaks. The pool cues were cut with weak points so that they shattered immediately when they made contact. Sugar glass is what they use in Hollywood when glass needs to be broken. It's very fragile and breaks easily when it makes contact with something else, such as a human skull. So now that we learned all the small details of stunt coordination, it was time to take all those skills that we learned and put them all together. Your fight scene needs to flow, and that flow really relies on motivation. So if someone gets hit in the back with a chair, obviously they're going to come back swinging and angry. Fight sequences need to ramp and gain momentum as they go on. Seeing a fight going from a broken chair to a punching out to breaking a pool cue to breaking a bottle over someone's head to choking someone else out with a pool cue is so much more interesting than watching someone go punch, return, punch, punch, return, punch. So try to include layers and leveling to your fight so they become more fun and interesting to watch. We had an absolute blast working with a real professional stunt coordinator and getting to see how they do all these stunts in real life is incredibly fascinating. Just remember, even though we aren't professional stuntmen, we had a professional stunt coordinator on set to make sure that we didn't get hurt. So make sure you take every safety precaution you can when working on a set like this. Thanks everybody so much for watching. Big shout out to Action Pack Stunts for helping us out on this shoot. And if you wanna see more videos like this, comment below, hit the like button, subscribe, tell your friends, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.